Lori Tishfield. Hi. <laughs> I was thinking Jennifer Apple. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going. It's it's going. That's where I'm at. How is it for you? Um, it's going. It's it's busy, you know, and I'm 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 tired, but I'm glad we are checking it this this chapter because tired is real life. Yeah. Yeah, we're here. We're here. How are you feeling about <laughs> the world? <laughs> like Oh, just like, just, um, I don't know. Do you feel tired too? Oh my God. Or is this just like being in your thirties? Well, I think it's certainly that part. No one tells you that, that that's that and your back is just, oh, wait, maybe that's a Jewish thing, but just like my <laughs> back is never like, I don't even know if somebody was like, what is one thing that you could replace on your body? Usually people would go aesthetic. And for me, it's like, give me a new spine. Like I just want yeah. a new back. Um, yeah, I think I don't know. You know what I I think it is, and maybe I'm wrong because I don't necessarily know. But we are in this like quote unquote post pandemic. The world arguably feels mostly normal. COVID has somehow been quote unquote integrated more into the like. Well, I might get it. Well, I might not. Mm-hmm. And and we're also like still traumatized. Many of us have tried to process, but most of us maybe have not. And so there's this yeah. weird post-traumatic thing that's happening. And then the hustle of real life has picked up because people feel like they've missed out on so much. So all of that, I feel, is compounding with the fact that winter does make us feel a certain way in hibernation land. So we're coming into like beginnings of spring where you maybe are feel pressured to like do the thing and bloom somehow. And all of that is like, wait though, I'm so tired. (laughs) That makes sense. I'm glad that you're hitting on like the COVID trauma because I I tell everyone, it's like, if you didn't come out of or come out of quarantine as like a different person, then you just didn't do it right. Yeah. (laughs) You just didn't do it right. Um, and I, and I think it's it's also like when you're like jumping back into things, there's also this weird like backpack of weight of like, does this actually matter? Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like, like this existential moment of just like, what is actually important in life? Because yeah. we all just saw like thousands of people lose their lives mm-hmm. and change careers. And yeah, so I, I totally get it. It's, it's, it's an interesting one. And I think our generation is not going to, be the same between like the millennials of having like 9-11 mm-hmm. to the recession mm-hmm. to this yep. it's just like yeah let's just let's just enjoy the rest of our days shall we <laughs> as much as we possibly can I think you're th- touching on like what what is important that question for me is something that I I mean I want to continue grappling with for the rest of my life because I think it'll continue making me present and also um feeling a sense of agency in the choices that I'm making because I'm not just doing things for for the sake of it. It's like, well, is this important? And how is this important? Yeah. And how is this serving me? Um, which I think I want to get into with our conversation. So before we do that, for anybody who does not who know who you are, who are you today? Oh, who am I today? Hi, my name is Lori Joy Tishfield. Joy is um, your middle I'm- name? Yes, it actually is oh, my middle name. So wow. you know, my parents they they set quite um, a bar for me. Yeah, <laughs> Life, which I think is pretty great. Yeah. Um, so hi, Lori Joy Tishfield. Um, I'm many things. Um, you know, I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm a partner. I'm mm-hmm. I'm officially a Brooklynite now. Yes. Um, I'm I'm biracial. I'm Polish, Russian, Haitian, Jew. I am. Uh, professionally, I'm an actorpreneur, which is a, a title that I kind of coined in my professional life. Um, and yeah, um, and I'm, I'm a crock pot explorer at the moment. And uh, any favorite recipes or? I just made like one of those like two ingredients pulled chicken. It's like chicken and salsa and you turn it on. And for some reason, it just makes me feel so brilliant. But <laughs> We're all just so basic at the end of the day. We're not unique. I love I love all of this. Um, well, first, let's just chat about how we met yeah. years ago. Like yeah. over 10 years? Is it, it's over 10 now, maybe. 10 years? Yeah, I would say so. I think that these were like our first jobs coming yes. out of college. Mm-hmm. Um, so my first job or one of my first jobs, I was a party coordinator for a company called The Plus New York. Um, I was working out in Westchester and then their Upper East Side. So um, offices. So this is like 
Broadway themed birthday parties for like everywhere from like the Nederlander kids to Drew Barrymore's kids to Jimmy Fallon's kids mm-hmm. and Jennifer Apple, um, <laughs> you know, came to my life as a performer that I would staff on yeah. many a party. So what were the characters you played? Like, didn't you play like a great like Miss Hannigan? Am I crazy? I did that once. I know the one that is like etched into my brain because it was really a choice was um, like a Rapunzel. And I had to wear this yeah. really long blonde wig, which, you know, if you've never seen what I look like, I am a dark haired woman with a lot of dark hair and so sticking my curly black ish colored hair under this blonde long Rapunzel wig was really difficult but also like a choice like clearly the most um non-blonde Rapunzel that ever lived (laughs) yeah it was it was like for our princess parties yeah Mm -hmm. and I remember that but I feel like there might have been like I played a wicked party. Yes. I remember this, you I were in Alphabet. Alphabet. And I was like, mm-hmm. I was like, all right, this is on brand. Yeah. Like- I think I want to say I played um, other princesses too. I definitely played Jasmine. Um, yeah. I did a lot of the princess parties. I remember those specifically. And then there were a couple yeah. other more like interesting theme. Oh, maybe there was like a Mad Hatter party. I might have done something. Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, that or maybe it was that. Um, Lion King, maybe mm-hmm. Greece. I think yes. I remember you on Greece yes. or Mary Poppins. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It was really. Yeah, it, was, it was. It was a chapter. It was a total chapter. I was doing that simultaneously as I was selling merchandise at Broadway shows. Um, those were my yeah. two first post undergrad things. I was literally like, I mean, I could have actually gone on for every single role in Peter and the Starcatcher um, by the how many times I'd seen that show. Um, I believe it. Rent, um, Avida. Oh, God. I mean, the list goes on. But wow, what a chapter. (laughs) Yeah. And the thing is, I think people don't really talk about how these post-grad jobs completely shape the rest of your career. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is the perfect segue because you were coordinating these events. You were hiring performers to do these events. And now you have your own business that obviously does so in a (laughs) more adult professional states of things but I mean (laughs) that probably gave you some real tangible life experience that helped you with starting your business which I'd love to hear more about sure yeah so uh, to give you kind of my origin story so Mm -hmm. I remember I was a party coordinator and is there something really inspiring about you know watching an office full of women and a women founded company um, and that employed many artists. And so I've just kind of been that space. I was also just really young. I remember when I got the job, they were like, don't tell anyone your age. Like you give off like leader vibes, but don't tell anyone yeah. your age. Cause I was like the youngest person there. And so I was working out agreements. I was selling parties. I was doing, wearing many a hat. I can do a really great balloon bouquet. And um, I hope that's on your special so, skills. Like literally the bottom. Be like, ask me for my, I, my dinosaur balloons. <laughs> I think when I have kids one day, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, you throw a great Annie party. And I'm like, I know. Um, but like, it's, um, and so the thing is, I, I was there and, you know, as one does when, when they first graduate from college, they're trying to find like flexible jobs. So I remember just like all these interviews I would go on, they're like, we love you, but we don't want to risk bringing you on. Cause like, what if you book a tour and you have to leave within like two weeks? So it's like, I get it. Um, and so I was working this and I was staffing my friends. It was like constant problem solving and um, it was a lot. And and so I reached a chapter where I was like, okay, I, I, I'm good at this. I, I do like it, but I wanted some flexibility. Mm-hmm. So I took some le- a leap. I remember I was at like a, I was doing a Wizard of Oz party and I was just like, it's like my third party of the day. And I was like holding all this like supplies and I turned to the, lion <laughs> at the time and I was like I am not gonna be here a year from today <laughs> it was just like my like moment um it's like a metaphor so, for your life in some way like you turn to the most ferocious of the characters who like needs to learn something about like gaining some <laughs> like you know energy of like change and you're yeah. like you you're the one yeah courage I get That's it. it um and so you know I took the leap and I started doing a bunch of brand ambassador gigs I was really inspired by my friends who did you know temporary gigs i was like you know what like i just i just have to take the leap because i didn't graduate from one of the top conservatories to like blow balloons like i need to kind of do it and so and shout out boco that was my my um school 
So anyway, um, I started doing brand ambassador jobs. Uh, I think the first of which I was like in this big Javits Center expo called the Fancy Food Show. And I was a brand ambassador for Siggy's Yogurt. Okay. Uh, so Siggy's you see like everywhere. It's like an Icelandic skier, high protein, all that fun stuff. And I was just like, oh, like I really, I like this. I, I'm really into like, I'm like that chick at a, a grocery store that I find that like with my family, I love trying new brands, new flavors. And, and um, so it felt like a no brainer because you're basically repeating a pitch over and over again. You're giving out free stuff. It's good vibes. It's good energy. You get a lot of free food in the process. So that was kind of a, a spiral that turned into a bunch of other brands being like, hey, can you represent my brand at Whole Foods? And so now I became like this like hardcore Whole Foods New York City demo girl. And um, I was just giving out samples um, for another yogurt brand, go figure. And I don't know, there's something about these like side jobs that maybe you, maybe it's just me, but I tend to kind of find parallels in my own acting career. Mm. So it, it like, at least it doesn't feel like I'm doing something completely unrelated. So for me, representing a yogurt brand was like a whole lesson in branding and I don't know. Tell me more about what you mean by that. Like what, what, yeah. I remember kind of after hours of doing a brand like this, you could see in live time when it works, when someone wants to pick up a product Mm -hmm. and you could see in live time when someone's like, no. Yeah. And you can see a whole wall of yogurts, which is an incredibly competitive category of snacks. So when you're looking at an overwhelming wall of yogurt, what do you gravitate towards? You gravitate towards packaging. And the parallel to that would be like a really great headshot. Um, You gravitate towards what are your values? So, you know, if you're like a muscle person who's obsessed with like their macros and protein, you're going to find that one with the highest protein. Mm -hmm. Um, And also like packaging is really smart. Lead with what your strengths are. So if you see something that's like 25 grams and you just grab it, it leads with high protein. It's just like, it's just like, how do we make it as easy as possible to book? Mm -hmm. And how do we make it as easy as possible to sell? And also in live time, yes, it feels really great when people say yes. I think it felt really good to, you know, when I was auditioning and not really feeling like I was getting a return on my efforts to in live time, people being like, yes, Mm. that was a really good feeling for my, my, you know, heart. Um, But then the moments were funny when they were no. And I was just like, great. It's not personal. Mm-hmm. Like, great. You don't eat dairy. Got it. Yeah. Oh, um, you don't like that this is a non-fat yogurt. Great. Yeah. And I would kind of, and, and so I think that to me kind of helped me navigate whatever this industry is for mm. us. Because a lot of the time we're just like, why, 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 why? Yeah. Um, rather than like, ooh, let's, let's dance. Let's look at it. Let's look at our headshots. Let's look at, you know, when yeses happen, why do they happen? When noes happen, will we ever know why? Right. But also, is it personal? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was kind of where I was. I was just doing a crap ton of demos. And in the process, brands were approaching me and they were just like, hey, um, I'm a vegan brand. I'm looking for someone. I was working full time at the time. And I had a friend who's coming off of tour who's vegan. And then next thing you know, my staffing brain was like, I can connect you to. And I started to see other demo agencies on the sales floor. And I was like, wow, like I can, like, I know people who can do that better. Mm. And so I, I remember like I'm, I was working in an event um, and it was a, like a dear mentor of mine. And he was like, Hey, like, you know, this could potentially be a business. And I, I like, I'd love to just kind of guide you through it. And I remember just being like 24, 25 and kind of moving faster than my fears in a way. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, but I will, I will file this S corp at the time. I will set up my business bank account. I will just like, it's just, it was just like an utmost mayhem. And I, I remember I was like still working demos. And then at night I would like be in my bed on like Squarespace making a website yeah. Um, and, and even so, I think it was a year after I worked the fancy food show, I was out walking it as a business. And I always tell everyone, it almost feels like you're like this stage of like, you're like a, being like a pathological liar where you're like, here are my services. Yeah. And like, you have no idea that I have no clients or anything. 
And so now people are doing follow-ups and I just created my own pricing. And, Amazing. Well, it's a fake it till you I'm make just, it. It's like a total fake it till you make it, which, you know, yeah. is literally life. So. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's just kind of amazing how much of a leg up that actors have in, in being a business owner because like 90% of it is just pitching your services. Mm-hmm. And 90% of it is people being like, I was approached by so many other agencies, but I really remembered you. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. So that was it. Next thing you know, I had my first clients and, and I was, you know, I was working some of them, but also I was staffing it and I saw it as a way to you know, make money residually while I would be in a rehearsal room or auditions. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I wanted to help my friends because go figure like my friends that I went to school with, I thought were honestly some of the most talented people I've ever come across. And to see them post college be like, I can't audition because I'm working like two different restaurant jobs. And by the time I'm done, I don't have a voice and I can't really afford to take this audition because I have to make my rent. And there's something just incredibly heartbreaking about it. Yeah. So I wanted to support my 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 people. So you create a natural talent and what yeah. exactly is it and how does it operate? Okay, so what it is, I've cultivated this over time, it's an experiential staffing agency. Um, so what we do is we staff um, like any experience with marketing needs, like cool pop-ups. And we also, our niche is in-store demos, a la like Whole Foods. And what we do is we staff all of those with actors. Um, and people say, why actors? And it's like, well, if we're auditioning every day, why not transfer all those skills yeah. and improv and representation in, you know, um, in memorizing information very quickly and in interacting with people, scene work, Transferring all of that to brand advocation, it creates the perfect storm of like, just really, it's, it's just the perfect marriage. Yeah. And you've been operating it as a business for how long now? Oh, man. I think it's been about six or seven years. It's like really sad. I, I have a birthday in my calendar and I never truly celebrate it. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we, that, that has to change. I'm not a big birthday fan, but this is a big, this is a baby. I know. You know what it is? I think it's an incredibly vulnerable thing to start businesses as actors. I remember when I started and I had so many people who were like, oh, like if you put like 10% amount of the energy that you're putting into your business back into your performance career, like where would you be? Mm. Um, and so I felt very alone in it. Um, I felt like there was a part of me that's like, ooh, am I giving up? Mm-hmm. Because I don't know anyone who does this. Um So maybe there's a little bit of that. I feel like just now in my like sixth or seventh year of business, I'm able to zoom out and be like, oh, this has actually helped me able to like walk with a sense of agency in my career and go to my representation and be like, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. Or no, I'm not doing this because of X. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's just, I, I think that there's just like a sense of like actors are just, we're groomed to be so scared. Yep. Yep. All the time. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm going to offer you congratulations on your birthday of your company whenever that happens. Um, I think you're touching on so many different things that I want to unpack. One is this what we're taught aspect of scarcity, shame, keep being small, and how it is a ripple effect to literally all facets of our lives. Yeah. And two – in that same vein, how we are also taught that there is, there are, I think, I think people are getting better at this, but that there are only so many quote unquote survival jobs, which we should unpack as a phrasing because I, I never yeah. use that as a phrase ever. I call it a thrival job because it allows me to thrive and pay my bills and live my life. Um, yeah. Side hustle, I guess we can talk about that. But like when we take this energy that people have taught us about staying small, shame, blah, 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 and put that into these things that keep us alive so that we can do the craft. Yep. We feel like there are only the, the box of the parameters of how you can create that side life to let you live your life is only possible in X amount of ways. And people yeah. often get so stuck and bogged down by their side hustle by their thrival job because yeah. they've chosen to do that with a scarcity mindset rather than the 
choice of how can this support me in all of the other ways that I want to with this level of like uplifting rather than pulling down. Um, so those two things is like, those are, that's where my head is at right now with what you've just said. Ooh, that's a lot to unpack. I mean, it's, it's almost like you have to be a disruptor. You have to go against the norm. I mean, I was telling, I was telling a friend last night, I was just like, you know, I, I think being a biracial person, I, I, I had to be, I, I was always thinking outside the box because I am outside the box mm. as a person. So go figure. I thought of like such a niche business in a way. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I always tell people, it's like I'm fighting the starving artist stigma with food, mm. which is kind of interesting. And so, and I don't know if you ever had this like as a kid, but like, I remember like watching like the few episodes that I watched of Friends and watching Joey and being like, do I relate to Joey mm. or like Sean Hayes and in, in Will and Grace. I was just like, do I like I, I I pursue acting. Like to me, like when I think of the actor that I am, like I was kind of modeling to be like the next Audrey McDonald. Like there's something very regal. But also you can you, you, I mean your voice is like, you know, you're it's very it makes sense to me that that would be it's not just <laughs> like a pipe you. dream. It's like so yes. <laughs> yes. But thanks. It's just like it's just um, you know, it's I, I think that media portrays actors to be like, like gypsies, mm -hmm. to be n not very bright. Mm -hmm. um, but then like you're watching major medical shows and you're seeing people who are like fully developed humans. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it just doesn't make sense that like we are, we are living such a scarcity mindset and then you have to go into auditions and people are like, great, we're going to have you play a lawyer. I remember going in for like lawyers and just being like, I can physically feel like a lack of authority in my own body. Yeah. Yeah. So how can I, how, what am I drawing from to actually play something that I actually want to play? Yeah. Does that make sense? Very much so. Very much so. I mean, it's a huge reason why I went and got my MFA, honestly, if I'm being totally transparent really? about it. I was... I was working consistently, pretty consistently. All, I was making most of my living as an actor in musical theater, mostly yeah. regionally. And I really, really wanted to do more on camera work. And I really wanted to do more straight plays. And I really wanted to do more Shakespeare. I really wanted to just like act without my voice. I knew my voice was booking me stuff. And I was like, yeah. but what if it wasn't me singing? Because I'm getting joy out of the acting stuff. It feels challenging. It feels newer. It feels harder. And I was yeah. so pigeonholed in the musical theater world. Very gratefully, I was like, you know, getting opportunities. But I remember talking to a mentor of mine at the time and she was like, you know, you're in between types. I was like, whatever that even means. Um, you know, you're probably going to work when you're older because you hold a lot of presence and because you're- You're really mature. mature. I'm like, okay, whatever that means. We all have like this, again, that's a whole other thing we can unpack. Um, yeah. And I sat with that, but then I really sat with the fact that I, and this, the revelation of this happened actually while I was in grad school, but I would often, I would say I'm an actor with a, a, an air of apology. People would be like, well, what do you do? And yeah. be like, I'm an actor. Yeah. Not like yeah. I'm an actor, period. Yeah. That is what I, I still am. battle with that. Yeah. And I, I made the decision to go back and get my MFA so that I would believe it myself. Um, did it's you not feel like, like I you did, did when you left. Oh, very much so. Very much so. Wow. I can say now without question, I am a fucking great actor. I am. Wow. I am. I believe it. You you might not like it. You might not want to hire me, but I know without your verification of me that I'm a fucking great actor. I am. Yeah. And That's that doesn't real. Thank you. And it doesn't and it doesn't take away from somebody else being a great actor. I think I struggled with the idea of like, well, me even saying it like that makes me sound like egotistical or narcissistic. And it's like, no, ev I, w yeah. I hope and dream and wish and pray for every other person to feel that much. Um, I don't know if it's confidence or security. It's agency. Yeah, it's agency. agency. Exactly. And so, you know, I definitely resonate with what you're saying because I would go in for these roles before. And even look, I get them now too. And I'm like, oh God, what is, <laughs> where does this live in me? But beforehand, yeah. I'd get these opportunities for the things that I really wanted. And I I didn't believe that I actually was as good of an actor or had the skill set without me singing, even though I wanted it so badly. And so mm. to be able to step into the fear around what it means to own one's skill set 
what it means mm-hmm. to accept that shame will always creep in and vulnerability happen. Like all of that will continue to um, exist. And I'm also allowed to own my worth, um, which every single person has inherently because they're a human being living and breathing on this planet. Whew. I mean, that's also age too. Yeah. It's it's terrifying to think of the people that were walking around in our 20s yeah. versus now. Yeah. And also, I'm sure when we're in our 40s, we'll just say the same of us yeah. at this chapter. Um, and I, I don't know if you've experienced this even transferring from theater to on camera. But I remember like when I started my on camera training, because like, go figure, that was my journey in, in running this agency. I was like, well, you know the majority of my feedback and who I am and what is in the catalog of musical theater and how progressive it was back then, you know, I don't think I'm going to work that much Mm. in musical theater. So I transferred more into TV and film and I found it to be more progressive. But in the process, I remember, you know, I was in a class and they're like, I was reading some sides for a cop and like, what does one do in musical theater? Which is like, you know, how do you carry yourself? What is your idea of a cop? How do they act? And, and on camera was like, great, let's strip that all. Who are you? Correct, period. Which That's arguably it. is literally acting all of like, I mean, I when I coach, it's like, oh, I, like especially when I have like a musical theater trained person, I'm like, cool, cool, cool. Who are you talking to? <laughs> They're like, oh, I thought I had to like no emotion. Like, no, no, literally, who are you speaking to? <laughs> like, yeah. Just dial this down, like literally in real yeah. time. Yeah. And I, I advocate for everyone is that like, I feel like I didn't really understand like even – I I didn't even think I was of value to bring myself to my work until Mm -hmm. I did on camera work because it was just like, Oh, I, I am enough. Mm -hmm. Oh, they actually want to see me be a mess. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And so once you see that you can't really unsee it. Um, And also, you know, I think I just simultaneously had that. I think everything runs in parallels and that's why I advocate for everyone to, look just kind of look at every single pocket of their life and see what what is the reoccurring parallel that's happening right now Mm -hmm. so when i was like go figure when my business was blossoming i was starting to kind of get a sense of who i was Mm -hmm. and and get a sense of agency and what was i good at Mm -hmm. um what did people want to see what did people celebrate and it was incredible it was an insanely vulnerable work yeah Oh my God, we're talking about so much that I love talking about. This is like my dream conversation because I think we're hitting on so many of these things that people, most of us navigate emotionally, but also um, the balance of these things. And so I'd love to go back to how you, I guess, define your business in your life. What do I mean by that? Kind Mm. of like referring back to how we had, you know, either called it like a survival job or a thrival job in my phrasing or like the side hustle. How do you feel that it exists in the the ecosystem of your life? And do yeah. you refer to it as something specific? Sure. It's really funny because I, I remember I, I've had a whole journey with this and that like something as simple being like people being like, you're an entrepreneur. And I was like, I feel like that's the most abused term say more that I don't e- I don't even use it for my own self okay. and I actually run a business okay for a while I was like well I'm a, I'm a small business owner okay mm-hmm. um but the funny thing is that like business to me I'm not the most like woo woo spiritual person um but I found that my business to me has been like a compass in a way um I find just things just happen and don't happen when exactly when they need to. Mm -hmm. And my business is actually the most tangible measurement of it in live time. Um, Sometimes I refer to my business as like, like a child in a way. Um, You know, there's like the infancy stage where it needs a lot of work and care. And now my business is kind of like, great, she's in kindergarten. She's six or seven, we can delegate, we can have babysitters. And I can focus on other babies that I want to build. and also, I think the most terrifying thing is is my business is almost like a growth barometer. Okay. Um, where I'm just like, I can feel when I'm being challenged mm-hmm. and I can feel when I'm not energized by it. And that's the most terrifying thing. Interesting. Um, and it's, 
I don't know. I hope that answers your question. It's it's just it's many things. Yeah. It's many things. Does it feel like something that supports your life? Does it feel like something that yeah. pays for your life? Does it feel like a side situation? Does it feel even to your performer artist self? Like where does it feel in that? Yeah. Um I think for a while, um I think on like on paper, it is my mainstream of income. Okay. Point blank. Um, I think for a while, especially when you grapple with like, I'm an actor, but also on paper, I, every, it pays for literally everything. Okay. So that was hard. Also just feeling the amount of energy it takes up in my brain. I, I remember going in for auditions and having that muscle memory of like, I need to access this impulsive creative soul in the room. And I have a meeting right after this. Right. It's like admin, creative, switching over and over and over. Um, so that's that's like a major challenge. Um, one of my dear friends, I remember, he was like one of the best best you know moments of advice that he gave was like, Lori, who are you today? Mm -hmm. Because you know sometimes I'll wake up and be like, I'm gonna be Lori, the best business owner, mm -hmm. and like do all my 1099s and my taxes mm -hmm. and all that stuff, and it'll be great. I had a self tape yesterday for a series regular. Yes, when I, I woke up, I'm not checking my email. <laughs> I'm going to be an amazing actor yeah. and, and prepare my sides. And I'm not even going to look at my emails because if I do, it'll just completely throw me off. Yeah. Um, and then of course, as one does, it's like, you know, you're going to be a great daughter and, and show up for your family and, and be as present as possible. So it's just kind of up to you to decide who you're going to be that day, yeah. which is, pretty empowering. That's why I ask at the top of this podcast, who are you today? That's literally why I do it because I think it is a choose your own adventure. I think it's depending on your mood, depending on life, depending on the things that are happening. Yeah. You know, we all are many things and we've been taught yeah. and told to diminish parts of those selves and keep other parts of those things smaller or hidden, but we are, we contain multitudes and we also contain the possibility for more multitudes. <laughs> like, and so yeah. whoever somebody wants to show up that day is is the truth of who they are in that moment. And that can change in five minutes and that can change in six years and that can change, you know, in two months. Um, it's, it's also like relationships, man. Like it's, it's, um, you know, I, the thing that's most terrifying and, and is I, I think my last two serious relationships were like five years long uh, and like I hit like the five year point and I felt like something just was off mm -hmm. and go figure. I had like the same thing with my business where I was just like, why is it so difficult to answer this email? Mm -hmm. Why do I feel utterly ins uninspired? Mm. Um, and it's okay to like, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I think people have that with their acting careers too. Like, have you had that chapter two where you're just like, Ooh, I'm not, I'm not energized right now. Yeah. That's like, I've been riding that way for a while. <laughs> she says, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah, I get that very deeply. How do you, re-energize yourself and find that inspiration when it's not happening, arguably even more so in a business that you run that employs other people, as in there are other people who are depending on you, that you have relationships yeah. with partners and brands and whatever that you need to get it. To, how do you get yourself yeah. inspired in that, that situation? Um, I mean, it's it's backstage. Um, it's, it's just everything that's happening backstage. And it's, it's funny because many people don't know when I have that. Um, it's, um, I, I find that like, Something I remember I filled with a questionnaire once and they were saying, you are, you are a person of service. You are energized when you are of service to others. Mm. Um, and that's honestly how I started my business. And I find myself most energized when it's payroll day because I'm really excited to pay people earlier on time. Yeah. Um, and so the best way I can describe it, and maybe it makes things a little bit less severe, is that like we all go through clouds. Like, I think I have that in my acting career now because I, I'm just struggling to figure out what my why is. Mm. And I tell everyone, like, in starting a business, like, when I, I, I will do this plug at the end, but also presently is um, the Actors Fund, also now the Entertainment Community mm -hmm. Fund. They have an amazing um, entrepreneurship project, um, which is all, like, entrepreneurship programming for people who have actual businesses and people who have just an idea. And it starts from just your base, like, what are your base ingredients? And that is your why. Why are you starting this business? Why are you an actor? Um, and so it's just a matter of just like sitting down and trying to understand what your why is. And if you don't know, 
go and 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 explore. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just had a one year through um, Black Theater Coalition. I did a one year fellowship at Disney on Broadway. Yeah, you did. And yeah, I did. And it was um, it was a lot. It was a birth of of the pandemic where my business was shut down, um, which was incredibly traumatic because everything shut down. And then I had a slew of actors that were like, hey, my, my events were canceled. Do you have any other work for me? Can I do some remote work for you? And now I'm just like feeling responsible mm-hmm. for all these people. Meanwhile, like applying for all of these like emergency, like, you know, pandemic loans and also figuring out my own unemployment. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, there has to reach a point where like, you kind of have to like remove yourself from the responsibility. Yeah and pivot. Mm -hmm. And so my pivot was, I got my COVID compliance certification. I sat with people in in the midst of like, you know, um, George Floyd's murder and the industry finally dealing with its own grapplings of decades, hundreds of years of racism, systemic racism, and being like, oh, this is everything I've experienced as an actor. How can I apply what I've had as an entrepreneur towards creating lasting change because I will personally sacrifice my own acting career because why why keep showing up if this is not going to be in my favor yeah and so a lot of my industry friends were like be a producer so I was exploring being a producer um up until the point of like you know running the testing COVID testing for a Tony Awards a couple of years ago I was like why how did I do this mm-hmm. but long story short it was just kind of like it kind of all brought me back. It took everything to shut down to now then be at Disney on Broadway and their marketing, publicity, and sales departments to see angles of our industry that I never thought that I would see to then like, I don't know. I, I think to kind of re fall in love with my business in a different way. Yeah. And my version of that was like, great. Maybe, maybe this is an uphill climb because I don't know, staffing in store demos and and that specific sector is something that like maybe I've out, outgrown mm. and that's okay. I mean, they should delegate that more. Mm-hmm. And right now I'm building like actual like more experiential marketing staffing, which is a little bit sexier and more creative. It's almost like casting. Mm-hmm. And on top of it, there's education. Right. Like right now, it's like, you know, I taught a really great workshop at City College. Um, about entrepreneurship for actors. And I'm like, great, like maybe, maybe that's what's going to energize me. And I don't know. It's just like, it's just kind of finding ways to re fall in love. Like I listened to this one podcast about relationships. And like the biggest thing that people in relationships don't do is they don't like mourn a chapter of a relationship that no longer is. Yeah. And you have to re-meet your partner for who they are now. Yeah. So I don't know. I just emptied a whole bag of things. Right no, now, no, but- no. My gosh. Well, first of all, thank you. Also, um, Dear listener, you can tell even all the other reasons that we didn't even start with, like why Lori is in this space um, and all the stuff that you are doing that's really incredible um, and trailblazing and just – so thank you for sharing. And what I'm hearing from all of this is that even when you are perhaps feeling uninspired or even if the world goes into a shutdown or even when opportunities aren't necessarily presented – Perhaps your superpower is your ability to get out of your own way and try new things, also know what you do know, and use that in all these new spaces. And the ownership of your talent in a non-apologetic way. It's just a confidence thing that makes everybody else around you trust that you know what you're doing and they're in good hands. Um, I'm yeah. hearing that in every single one of these things that you found yourself doing. And in the process of doing so, you remained open enough to receive feedback from the universe about how that then informs you in your own life. Um, yeah. It's yeah. just, it feels it's like it... such a, like, a, 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 I dare say, like, healthier way of trying to find inspiration because you're not muscling it. You're trusting that you have yes. the thing and you will yes. figure it out because you know that you will and have to, and that it's okay to not know how. You just know that it will because it must, and you trust yeah. yourself enough to go through whatever that is to get to the point that it will come back the way it needs to. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a trusting all the time. Um, it's 
and it's so interesting, like, you know, in the middle of the pandemic, I just when I thought that I was giving up performing, I got a call from like Andrew DeShields to perform in a series of his shows. <laughs> and so forming a relationship with him, it's like, you know, we're both Capricorns. So we cusp, kind of bond on that. The corn cusp, girl. So hey. and the one of the best images about us, though, is that like the goat. What they do is they will climb a whole mountain, but they won't look up. Mm-hmm. They just trust that they will get to the top. <laughs> and like he is literally the embodiment of mm-hmm. that, and a huge, huge inspiration. And I think, like you just said, it's just like I think the key word is trust. Like I will candidly say, like I don't audition super often um i i feel like i'm a part of our our industry Mm -hmm. i know a lot of people i know a lot about what we do um but it's it's so funny in that like i always tell people i'm like i'm gonna start this business and i feel like it's gonna bring me back into our industry in a very intentional and meaningful way yeah i don't know what that is i mean it brought me to disney on broadway Mm -hmm. they're like great you have like a whole marketing background and like I was able to learn a lot that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I don't know, man, acting's weird. And I, I tell everyone, like, oh, I get the question all the time. Like, so have you like given up on acting? And I'm like, oh, the insult. I mean, the, it's, I think of that as like, it, first of all, many people don't understand what it means to have a career in acting versus the love of acting. And it's mm. also taking away from the fact that breaks are allowed to happen, Mm -hmm. that seasons of your life also take place and that you grow as a human being and your relationship to acting, to the industry, to all – like those things are allowed to change. And so the question is often not asked with malice. I know that. It's same same type of thing of like, oh, what have I seen you in when people who aren't in the industry like ask – it's like, well, I don't know what you see, so I don't know, you know, like, I don't know what to tell you, <laughs> right? Like, but I think th- the malice isn't there, but the implication is such that you, one, begins to receive that as, well, it's an all or nothing. Yeah. And it's not fair because arguably when you audition, as you literally just talked about, you are giving your all. You are present yeah. and you are committed and you want that thing. And you're also being more selective, right? I think yeah. just because you're an actor doesn't mean you do all of the things or want to do all the things. Like I don't want to do a cruise ship. No shade to a cruise no. ship. But like I, I, you, I am not somebody who can stay contained in a space. That is not who I am. I will not yeah. thrive in that environment and you will not get the best performer out of me. Could I do yeah. the job? Sure. Could I do the life? No. And that's a no. I mean, that's being responsible. And that's the thing is like, I feel like we've been taught to like cast a wide net, say yes to everything. But it's just like, if I know I'm running a business that is pretty demanding, like also like I love my home. I love, you know, I love my relationship. I just like, I don't, I don't know. It's just like, what do you really want me to do that contract? Be miserable the whole time? Correct. Like, I'm just going to be responsible and show up where I know that I can show up for you in the best way possible. Correct. So, I mean, am I desperate? No, I'm not desperate. Um, But I don't know. I don't know what the right, I don't know if there is a right way. There isn't. You know what I mean? There isn't. That's the thing, right? And I hate when people guilt you and they're like, well, you don't want it that bad. And I'm like, that was like... Like, I remember even, like, in college, I was, like, working on, like, some, like, random monologue. And I was, like, Trish, I was, like, this isn't clicking. My teacher was just, like, what are you, what are you, are you passionate about anything? (sighs) And one thing that I will give myself, and maybe that's just, like, having my mother as my mom. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But it's, like, when you, when you try me in that way, (laughs) like, when you try to make me question who I am, Mm -hmm. like, that just does not fly. Yeah. Like we're just being like, I would not be in this incredibly expensive conservatory, like away from my family and everyone I love and devoting this amount of effort if I wasn't passionate about something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, because that's coming at like, your character you? rather than coming at the craft. Those are two different things. Like if you came at me for like the craft or like, hey, are you, you know, who are you talking to and what is the environment? 
I can hear yeah. that as a note. But if you're coming at my character as a human being, as my access point for the material, you're taking away from what makes me me. And yeah. also, perhaps in that particular moment, you weren't as quote unquote passionate as you are usually. And what a beautiful exercise in in learning how to show up from where you are. Like, that's, I mean, that's useful. Yeah. It's incredibly useful. I mean, I remember one of my coworkers at Disney was like, the most important thing that you'll learn is also what you don't like. Yeah, very much. Very much. I'm like, oh, that's incredibly efficient. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I don't know, man. It's it's just like acting is, is the weirdest profession. <laughs> um, but I, the thing that I have learned, especially in my business, I'm constantly excited about advocating for artists. Mm -hmm. Like, like, you know, we really are the shit. Like we just are emotionally intelligent. Mm -hmm. We are creative. We are hustlers. Mm -hmm. Even people who are just like, oh my God, how do you start a business? And I was like, try being an actor in New York City. Yeah. That is so much harder. <laughs> it's so much harder. Yeah. And so it's just like, it's, it's really, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's just that like what I've learned so far from a zoomed out industry approach and also being in it is that like, this is not an industry that is at service to us. No. It has not been built. Like I was like, man, if I could rewrite this whole industry, I would, I would have people compensated for their auditions. Oh gosh, please. Cause, cause people are like, Oh, like, you know, auditioning is your job. It's like, yeah, well I paid for my train. I paid for that headshot print. I spent hours preparing for that material and I wasn't compensated. Yeah. So what do you do? Um, I don't know. This is like, I hope this is like at all useful for people. No, I think um, no, we're talking about the things that people think about, right? I mean, I just, I guess from your entrepreneur, which I know you don't, or actorpreneur hat, for people who are, say, in a side hustle yeah. space and it is feeling touch and go or it's feeling unsustainable or it's feeling depleting mm -hmm. in a way that is not going to assist them in what they really want to be doing creatively, what would you suggest? So here, yeah, I feel like I should have led with this. So We're if anyone's still listening in on this, you know. <laughs> we got, we got there eventually. Yeah. So what I tell people is this, back to what is your why? What is your why in acting? What do you love about it? What energizes you? everything. Great. Let's take that one skill or that one characteristic and transfer it. That way you are exercising that muscle more often. It's more gratifying and you don't need permission from other people, aka booking something to actually use it. So for my example, it's like, well, that acting is I love storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, I love being around artists. Um, I love and also non-artists. I love interacting with people. Um, but I think I think the biggest thing was storytelling for me. Um, I hate doing cabarets because I was like, I don't like to be out of the context of a piece. Mm -hmm. And so go figure, like my business is based on storytelling of brands. Like I was onboarding a new brand this morning of like an oat water. <laughs> and and it was just so hard for them to communicate their origin story. And people don't understand the importance of that. And it's just like, once once you kind of are able to break away and create something that's more human, mm -hmm. then humans will just kind of latch onto it, like, you know, bees to honey. And so I think that has been my way of like, of still feeling like I'm in a sense of performance, still in a means of storytelling and developing human connection and and invigorating a sense of self-reflection. I think that's a huge why of what brought me into theater. I mean, when I got into theater, I was like the most introverted person ever. I didn't talk. Mm. <laughs> like I was like a straight A student that just did not talk. Mm. And then go figure, I was just in a space where, you know, it just like, it, it forced me to grow in a way. And so I don't know. I, I think that's just, that was just a why that I was able to exercise on the regular. Um, and so I don't know, everyone has their own thing. 
And are you saying then if somebody finds this why, and let's say somebody is currently working in the food industry and yeah. you're a bartender yeah. and you discover that your storytelling is, we'll keep it with what you said, like storytelling, but the bartending as, as a side hustle is draining you, you are using your voice too much. You're not able to show up to your auditions. It's not sustainable. Your hours are insane. Is yeah. it sitting with yourself and saying, cool, if my why is I love to storytell and I want to be of mm -hmm. service in storytelling, how can I approach my bartending in a way that is more from a storyteller lens or is it let me sit with what is what are other side hustles that will garner me the same type of income that will also allow me to storytell in a way that doesn't deplete myself? Like what is the... I mean, it's and it's also like, what is your me preferred method of storytelling? Mm -hmm. Like, do you want to write a book mm -hmm. and design cocktails and have these cocktails be inspired by like, um, like the works of Tennessee Williams, like something really specific like that? I always find like the most, um, the most success comes in niche. Mm -hmm. So, you know, or if you're just like, I know that I love to be in front of people then maybe your business is you could be like some sort of airbnb experience where you know you are creating um abridged plays and cocktail tastings throughout the entire play um that is inspired by like the world of the play or the characters or certain flavor profiles that are in line with like a character like like this is like one of my favorite things to do is to go to someone and say great what is your why mm -hmm. in acting what is something that you just like love? Like, what is something like, I'll do this with you right now, Jennifer oh, Apple. Okay. <laughs> what, what is your why in acting? Like what, like what got you into it? Yeah. It's, I think the definition's morphing a little bit. Um, but uh, initially it was, it is the same thing, uh, storytelling and more specifically truth and honesty. Um, I, I, for me, acting is um, or a good actor or an actor that I aspire to be or the stories that I want to tell. Um, my access point is I am the only one through which this story can be told with this level of honesty, with this level of truth, with this perspective that only I can mm -hmm. give. Um, yeah. And so that for me is my access point currently with acting. Um I love that. It's the marriage of your personal experiences with text to kind yeah. of bring it alive. Yeah, I love that. Thank I'm you. obsessed. Thank you. What are things that like completely out of acting that you people would be so shocked that you're into? I don't even know if it's shocking because I feel like I talk about it all the time, but um, nature hiking is like and mountains generally is like actually my happy place. Um, I think I'd be equally as happy living remote, literally completely remote off the grid, um, in a mountain in the middle of nowhere with just mm -hmm. my dog and taking care of nature like that. I am, um, I'm much more of an introvert than I think people realize. And I really don't mind solitude at all. Um, and I, um, crave the quiet of, um, the mountains and nature and, um, not interacting with people who drain me and um, being able to hear my thoughts and being able to take myself out of um, what feels like the urgency of time. And I'm, I'm a native New Yorker who loves New York. So that is um, definitely a dichotomy in my, my life. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things that bubbled up is almost like, you know, that can be some sort of like monetized blog. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, like, I'm also trying to, like, stray away from things that people have done for a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, because, again, niche, unique. Um, but I'm, like, thinking, I'm, like, yes, it can be a blog. Yes, it can be um, some sort of, like, guided experience. Like, yes, you're sacrificing your, your solitude, but you're also, like, that could almost be like some sort of like hiking performance art that people in New York City can like escape New York City and and go on a hike or some sort of retreat with someone and just observe them have some sort of self-discovery because like that's something that's really freaky like there's a lot of folks like 
in corporate that don't even know how to access that part of their brains. Um, and also like, if you wanted to shop that off the corporate people, like their budgets are insane. Um, but like, I'm, and I'm also just like, I'm also going to like challenge you and pry a little bit more. Like what is something really that you think is weird about yourself? Oh my God. There's a lot that, that you're I- into. I don't know if it's weird. I'm very particular. <laughs> okay. Um, in terms of like my brain, what goes on in my brain, I know what happens for many people, but what goes on in my brain is it, my brain is a wild place. It is a wild, beautiful playground of an anxiety ridden, neurotic, but creative place. And so I think when it comes to like doing the thing, depending on my headspace, I will do the, do the thing in a way that corresponds to how my brain is operating. So if mm-hmm. I am stressed or if I'm overwhelmed, my like space, for example, will be literally on par with my brain. Um, mm. And so I don't know if it's like weird about me, but nothing about me is out of alignment in the way in which I operate. If I am a disaster, everything's a disaster. If I am on my game, everything's on my game. Um, I am pretty consistent, which I think is scary for people because they're like, how are you, which is overwhelming when it's like, I'm riding the wave of life, but um, the consistency of who I am across all of the things is pretty, um, insane. And I don't know if people really know that because I think I present pretty together. <laughs> I mean, I would say like, you're not alone in ed- everything that is there. For sure. And and I'm going to throw in another challenge into this stew of challenge here is what is something that you love to give? And I say this because in the midst of like scarcity mindset land of actors is that we're always just like, I can do this and I really want this. And I really want this. I really, really, really want this. But it's like, pause. What do you want to give? Oh God, I have a lot. Um, perspective, I think is a big one. I want people to be able to like really have a perspective on themselves, on themselves within the world and like really see it without judgment, but just being able to like see things and Just really the mirror. Yeah, I think I I, lo- I I think it's what makes me a brilliant coach too. Like I'm here to mirror back what you're giving me and mm-hmm. make you see that and own that and love that hopefully or just like use that if it's helpful. Um I also really um if I have resources, I want to give them. That's what this podcast is all about. It's like, I don't want to, I'm not a hoarder of what I know. I don't think I know anything. And the more I do know, the less I know. But I want to connect yeah. people to the resources and people and opportunities um, that will continue making them see said perspective. <laughs> like, I want to be that um, connector without necessarily having to get into the weeds of like hanging out with people. And do you feel like you can relatively do that pretty quickly with anyone that you meet? Not even a question. Yes. It's an energy. I like read, I mean, energy, I like not in a woo-woo way. Like you walk in and I know exactly what I'm meeting. So here's your business. Um, and you can take it or leave it. (laughs) Um, I think that you are, and I'll say the word friend, because I think that is an incredibly abused word in our industry. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, my friends in this show. It's like, you're not friends, yeah. you're acquaintances. So I think you are a really great, like, friend in that you hold mirrors up to people and you uplift and you offer Thank you. ways for them to grow. And I think that is something that can be in tandem with some sort of like nature moment, Mm. some sort of escape from the norm. Um, And I think that there are many people out there that are craving that Mm -hmm. insanely deeply and has nothing to do with your acting. Yeah. But like, imagine how gratifying it it would be if like, you formed this offering and you got a call from someone that's like, 
oh gosh, like I've been, I make six figures and I'm working a job that I'm miserable in. And I, I don't, I don't feel like I have any meaningful relationships and I don't feel like I'm growing. And I, I want to find love and all those like blah, 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 lists. If someone called you and was like, Jen, like, can I, can I just do a, a one day hike with you? And like, you were able to be instrumental in just someone for a day, like, you holding a mirror to them and just telling them like, these are things that I, as someone who just met you two hours ago, thinks is beautiful. Yeah. Think you are worthy of this. Think you of this. Like, like I'm, I'm not the believer of life coaches. I don't like any of that woo woo stuff, but like there are so many people that would pay a stupid amount of money just for a feeling of connection. Yeah. Especially in this like social media age that we're in. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I just thought of that. I love <laughs> I love this offering. Thank you. I'm going to hire you off of this podcast to help me start that business. <laughs> um I I this was such a wonderful unexpected journey of an episode that I I'm here for and I I mean, I'm so grateful to you for trusting me in this space to go on the journey and we touched on some, you know, harder things. And did we fix them? No. But I think, again, it's important to just acknowledge that like, this is the world that we are living in and we're not, and no one's alone in feeling these, these feelings. Um, and so you are such an example of, um, continuing to explore and cultivate and have ideas and stay open yet firm. And it's just, I think you are, you are the type of person that I, dream of collaborating with in my life. And so Ooh. I'm I am so excited for all the people who do get to work with you. And I hope that we get to work together that isn't me wearing a Rapunzel wig. Um, and uh, for anybody who wants to work with you with your business or hire yeah. you as a performer or reach out to you with questions or have them do a reading, which is basically what you just did, um, of them for their own business that you should now potentially put on your website as an offering. I honestly might. Yeah, I might start doing that. You now. might, should, is, I don't like the word should, but mm, yes, can highly consider. Um, how within your boundaries is the best way for people to reach out to you? Sure. Um, I would say you could just shoot me an email. I mean, number one, y'all are working, looking for some great gigs. Uh, brand ambassador gigs, a lot of cool events, you know, we pay well. And I tell everyone it's like, you know, I get it. If you, you know, if Hamilton's calling you like go and do Hamilton. I'm not going to guilt anyone for, for anything, but you can email me Lori at natural talent.co, or you could just go straight to my website, natural talent.co. That's probably the easiest way to reach me. Um, I I'd be happy to like, just like chat and brainstorm. And if there's anything that you want to learn more about my journey, I'm more than happy to share. Um, but also if you need some work over the summer, like, Hey, what's up? You know, I'd love to add you to my file. Yes. Um, and you know, we are not only just New York, New Jersey, you know, we, I've kind of been expanding and moving faster than my fears. And hmm. we now staff in California and Chicago and yes. DC and Florida and we're, we're nationwide now. So yeah, say hi. I, it doesn't hurt for me to just hop, add you to my file. Um, and also I'll give an offering too, is um, look up the Entertainment Community Fund. Their creative entrepreneurship project was incredibly life-changing for me. Um, if you have an existing business, you can apply to be an, a part of their next cohort. Um, but that, that was, I, I think they now are remote. So anyone in the country can, can join. You're a dream. I adore you. Thank you for this conversation. Thank you for uh, giving me my next business that I don't have the time and capacity to start, but I really wish I did. <laughs> it's a seed. It's a seed. Oh, no, no, it's no, no, no. Like it's, it's definitely a seed. Um, <laughs> and uh, thank you for this. And I'm excited for what's next. Hey, I mean, thanks for reaching out and caring. Cause I think a lot of people are, are rarely interested in what I, what I do. Um, so it means a lot. And I hope that this is somewhat of use for your community and anyone out there for sure